So now that Zen 3 is here and, well, in pretty short supply pretty much all around the world, uh, we want to start on a few videos with a bit of a different vibe now that everything is starting to settle down. You see, just the other day, we were debating on which one of these new Zen processors would be the most popular, and we landed on the Ryzen 5 5600X. Personally, I think this is the best all-around CPU in AMD's new lineup since it's the lowest priced, gets amazing in-game frame rates, and holds its own in multi-threaded rendering too. Not only that, but if you're going to find one of these new Zen 3 CPUs, it's most likely going to be this one since it seems to be getting restocked more often. That conversation got us into thinking about the upgrade path uh, that someone might be on right now. You see, while we did showcase the Ryzen 3000 versus 5000 series in our launch day review, the reality is that most users' upgrade cycles are two years or longer. They might be looking to upgrade for about the same price or the same cost as they originally paid for. And that's where the Ryzen 5 1600X, 2600X, 3600X, and 5600X come into play. The upgrade story between them is really straightforward. I mean, they all cost about the same at launch, even though they're separated by almost four years of development. Also, since these are all six core 12 thread CPUs, it also gives us a really interesting opportunity to check out how the Zen architecture has evolved over time with processors that have an identical core layout. So in this video, we're gonna find out what kind of performance uplift someone could expect uh, between these four different generations of Ryzen processors, and also quickly check out the Zen architectural improvements uh, from its birth till now. Trust me guys, this is gonna be interesting. The new Pure Loop all one coolers from Be Quiet have a doubly decoupled pump near the radiator for silent operation and flexibility for mounting, an elegant cooling block with pure white illumination, an accessible fill port on the radiator with liquid for future proofing, and Pure Wings 2 fans on the rad. Check it out below. All right, so I wanted to start this all off with a bit of a history lesson about Zen's life up to now. And that's because it basically changed AMD's path from trailing Intel by a huge amount to now beating their best CPUs in almost every way. It's been an epic success story. Back before Zen, AMD was facing some very real problems. They'd bet big on bulldozer architecture that failed to deliver, so by the time Zen rolled out in 2017, other than a few APUs, their lineup was basically filled with three-year-old processors. And those didn't stand a chance against what Intel was offering, especially in gaming. I wish there was time to go over all the differences between Zen and Bulldozer, but let's just say that it was a completely new design. And I mean, AMD threw out everything about their old design and started new. Not only that, but the new architecture brought them from an ancient 32 nanometer manufacturing process to 40 nanometers, along with an SOC layout, DDR4 support, and cores that used SMT. The difference was like night and day, where something like the Ryzen 5 1600X could literally run circles around the FX8370. But the big news was that Zen put Intel on notice that AMD was serious, and the updated Zen Plus proved that too. From a broad view, Zen Plus wasn't a huge change for AMD, but it was still really important since they moved the architecture from 40 nanometers to a 12 nanometer process. This, along with Precision Boost 2 and XFR2, allowed for higher sustain clock speeds and an overall more efficient architecture. But personally, I think the biggest change for the Ryzen 2000 series were its updated memory controllers that increased speed from 2667 MHz to 2933 MHz and made choosing modules a lot easier. You can actually see that playing out in the 1600X versus 2600X story, but in a more subtle way. While the clock speeds look really similar, like I said before, it was all about sustaining those frequencies over longer periods of time that gave Zen Plus a huge leg up. The 2600X was also a bit less expensive since it ended up competing with Intel's Coffee Lake and AMD still needed to play the value card. Overall, that ended up being a nice incremental step up for Ryzen, especially when it came to single thread performance, but the pace really ended up kicking into overdrive with Zen 2. With this evolution, AMD started diving further into the architecture to improve almost everything. But their main focus was to improve communications between various parts of the chip. They doubled the amount of cache per CCX, expanded memory support to 3200 MHz, added PCI Gen 4, and also rolled out 12 and 16 core versions into the consumer space. A lot of this was helped by moving to another new process node with 7 nanometers and resulted in an IPC uplift of about 15% in some cases. In the mid-range, the Ryzen 5 3600X and all the architectural changes also meant higher clock speeds, very similar power consumption, 
and a price shift back upwards to the 1600X's $250. The IPC increase and sustained frequency improvements moved AMD forward in a big way, and in many ways, Zen 2 ended up being the generation that made people decide to jump ship away from Intel. But while Ryzen was winning on multi-core, there was still one area where they needed improvement, and that was in single or lightly threaded situations, especially gaming. And yes, that brings us to Zen 3 and the end of this quick history lesson. In many ways, this is the biggest jump forward for Ryzen's core architecture since its introduction in early 2017. In order to reduce latencies, they moved to a different core layout with shared cache and rebuilt the front end execution and load store functions within each core. That 19% IPC improvement between one generation and the next is beyond impressive, and I'm sure it's something Intel really wishes they could replicate. Now, when you look at specs, nothing really has changed in a big way, but all those backend updates lead to additional performance where it mattered the most. That's in single-threaded apps and latencies, which ended up leading the 5000 series to some big wins over Intel in gaming. But the 5600X is also the most expensive Ryzen 5 yet, at 300 US dollars. And right away, we can see an interesting story playing out here, since some applications react differently to the revisions AMD's made over time than the others. For example, our compiling test sees a relatively small jump from Zen to Zen Plus and Zen 2 to Zen 3, but a huge improvement between the 2600X and 3600X. The same can be said for reality capture, and it's likely due to these programs using a combination of heavy and lightly threaded workloads. Metashape shows the same thing here too, but heavily multi-threaded video transcoders like Handbrake show a more incremental and linear approach to overall performance improvements, but the differences from Zen 1 to Zen 3 are still pretty massive. Even when compared to the 2600X, moving up to the 5600X gives enough of a jump to make it worth a while. Just remember that you'll have to wait till a year for new BIOSes if you want to reuse your X470 or B450 motherboard though. As for video rendering, in a lot of situations, GPUs have become a bottleneck, but there's something important going on here as well. If you're still on first generation Zen, moving up will be life-changing. It seems like for these types of applications, there is a point where memory bandwidth starts to matter in a big way, especially when it comes to quickly feeding the GPU with information. Like I said before, that's one area seriously lacking in the 1600X and other CPUs from that generation. Moving on to gaming, and this isn't even close, guys. I mean, if you are on a budget, getting a 3600X or even a 3600 along with a B450 motherboard could be a really good option. But it's also super hard not to recommend jumping onto the 5600X bandwagon since it's literally light years ahead, provided you also have a GPU that can keep up with it. We can really see where AMD's focus was for this generation, and it's exactly what they needed against Intel, and it separates themselves from others in CPUs. Power consumption of the overall system is also something that's super important when it comes to upgrading. The last thing anyone wants is to find out their power supply isn't enough for their new components. But for the most part, Zen has remained at pretty much the same power envelope since the first generation chips were released. And this is mostly because the additional efficiency from new manufacturing processes has allowed AMD to do more at the same power rather than reducing consumption. On the other hand, if you want a new GPU to go with the processor upgrade, looking at changing the power supply might be a good idea depending on what your system is currently rocking. Well, I guess there isn't all that much left to say because the results really do speak for themselves. But the real question that everyone's probably asking themselves is, is now, like right now, a really good time to upgrade? Um, that's a bit harder to explain, so let me break it down for you a little bit. If you're on the 1600X, it's pretty much a no-brainer that the 5600X, along with a brand new platform, will work wonders for your system. But upgrading will also come at a pretty hefty cost because you'll need a new motherboard and you'll most likely need to upgrade your memory as well. We've also seen that upgrading your GPU on any older AMD system can also work wonders, but uh, there are limits to those benefits as well. So make sure to check out the video right over here if you're interested in learning more about that uh, use case scenario. People rocking a 2600X will also see some impressive performance uplifts, uh, but it isn't one of those situations where you need to just rush out and buy one of these new Zen 3 CPUs. In fact, if your 2600X is hooked up to an X470 motherboard or a B450 motherboard, You'll be just fine for now until new BIOSes are rolled out that'll allow you to drop in a 5600X. 
Um, or you could also just grab a 3600X and then just avoid this whole stock situation. And that'll also save you a few bucks to spend on something else. Now, speaking of the 3600X, unless if you're playing competitive online shooters at low resolutions where the 5600X can give you a competitive advantage, I just skip this whole new generation. I mean, sure, I mean, if you need to have the latest and greatest, which that whole consumerism attitude can also be a huge factor, you're perfectly fine with this CPU because it's amazing at what it does and it should be fine for at least the next few years because it's pretty capable. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys were able to take something from this video and I hope it also helped you make a choice or a decision as to what you would need to do with your existing system, whether if it's two or three years old. Let us know what you think. I'm Eber with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. And please, spend responsibly.